I live in Los Angeles now, and I am from here, and, uh, you know, basically I moved to L.A., I, I don't care about my career, clearly, I don't, I don't, it's not that, it's basically if I saw another winter, I was gonna murder someone in the face, but the point is, half of your life, you wake up in the morning covered in seven blankets, right, still shivering, you look out at the window, there's a frozen cat stuck to the outside, that's half of your life, guys, seriously, get the hell out of here, okay? So LA is nice. Uh, I just got married a little while ago, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. And uh, but I love how like no time passed before babies are being shoved in my face. Right? She's baby. You gotta have a baby. You're meaningless without a baby. You know? It's like, and I'm not ready for babies. I'm just not. I mean, we're probably gonna have one because we're currently practicing the pulling out method of contraception because <laughs> we're 14 and Amish. Apparently, I don't know what I'm doing with my life, but let's talk about it. Um, but it's ridiculous, so there's, okay, we're not complete idiots. There are reasons, okay? There's two reasons why we're using the pulling out method, all right? Reason number one, my wife cannot go on birth control because in her words, it makes her fat, and in my words, it makes her fucking crazy. So that is <laughs> off the table. And I mean crazy, do you understand what I'm saying? To the point where I would rather risk a baby <laughs> every time we have sex then have to drag my fat, crazy wife out of a bell tower where she's picking skinny bitches off with a sniper rifle, because that's what'll happen, I'm just saying. Hormones shoot out of her face like a Stephen King novel. It's scary, I'm just, whatever. And of course, I don't use condoms because the Catholic Church says they'll give you AIDS, and I don't question the church. I'm sure they're doing their research. They're all over it. <laughs> whatever. But it's awkward. I mean, it's not the best end to a nice sexual experience, the pull out, right? It's very, like, it's tough to explain even. To me, pulling out is a lot like running a marathon, and then right before you hit the finish line, you just do a belly flop on the sidewalk. <laughs> you know? And up until that point, everybody's like very motivated, like, yeah, go, you're there, you're doing it. Well, oh, why would you do that? You're like, I don't know, I panicked, I got shit all over me, I need an orange slice immediately, please. Can I take off my number tag? How many guys have you had sex with? <laughs> and it's just like, you know, you can't pull that off smoothly. It's impossible, right? It just, it ruins the whole sexual encounter. I don't care how slick you think you are, right? As soon as you pull out, you are just a naked man shivering and masturbating in the dark. That's all you are, dude, I'm sorry. Um, she doesn't even have to be there at that point, whatever. The, <laughs> It's not a big deal. <laughs> but you do learn a lot about women when you're married, which is interesting. Like, I learned that women have uh, ridiculous nightmares. Let's say that. Um, okay. My wife and I are dead, dead to sleep. I'm sleeping. Great night's sleep. Three in the morning. I wake up to a high-pitched, shrieking scream. Right? One of those ones you just wake up swinging. You just wake up swinging. There's obviously stormtroopers in the house, ninjas, a Republican, whatever. You just wake up swinging. So then I realize we're not under attack, right? So I look over, I'm like, oh my God, what happened? She's like sitting on the bed, just bawling, right? Shivering. She's like, oh my God, I had a terrible nightmare, right? So I immediately start rubbing her back, because that's what you do. She has a nightmare, you're trying to get a blowjob. Rub the back, dude. Just rub the back in any situation you're unsure of, okay? And I'm saying all the things you say, you're safe now, I'm here, you, you're still pretty, have you lost weight, whatever you say, right? <laughs> I'm not very good at comforting people. Anyway. <laughs> so I get her calmed down, and then I was like, so what was the dream, right? And she had to take a moment to collect herself. She's like, oh God, oh, it's so bad, I just, I dreamt that you got really drunk and you were super distant and unaffectionate with me. <laughs> yeah, I waited for more too, but that was it. Um, it's like, that's not a nightmare. That, that's, that's what happens every time Sidney Crosby laces up his skates. Like, that's a Sunday afternoon. What is wrong with you? Like, that is not a nightmare, okay? How about this? How about try dreaming that a lion with the head of your ex-girlfriend is devouring your nuts while a bunch of your grandmother's friends stand around naked rubbing honey on their tits asking why you never became a doctor. How about that? That's a nightmare. Do you see the difference? Anyway, thank you, Montreal. You guys were great.